Sometimes something can mean a lot to you, but really it's sort of nothing. It's just sort of an echo of what it means to you. Like someone will see an object, and to them it's just an object. But to you, it's the whole story behind how you got that object, and why you still have it, and maybe who gave it to you, things like that. Even if it's just the box of the object, and it's just an empty box because you've lost the object or something, but you've got some sentimental value to it. In the film A Single Man, at some point the main character takes a, sh a pencil sharpener out of his pocket and shows that that has a significant meaning to him. I went home for a day recently and I looked through my earring box um, just for a short while, but I realised that I've still got the boxes the empty boxes from earrings that I've either lost or have got mixed in with the other earrings. And I can tell you that that's the box from the first earrings I ever had, I think. And it's probably a bit silly. I don't know if earrings are important or not. I mean, I'm kind of allergic to plasticky type. I mean, I can still wear them, but after a while my ears might bleed or something, which isn't very good. Um, but I've watched a couple of makeup type channels recently and you know I don't know hardly anyone mentions earrings specifically ever so I don't know if earrings are important or not really generally I think it's interesting watching people do videos about makeup I think it seems like quite an intimate thing um, and I think I much prefer the ones who are relatable normal type people than people who seem vastly different. I guess it's just nicer listening to someone who's, you know, just an average person putting on makeup and them talking about why they put on makeup and conveying this and them seeing normal and bringing you into their lives a bit and doing something so intimate as putting on makeup and touching their face and things like that, I guess people who are relatable rather than acting flawless but they're still special people whatever they look like really so I think my favourite uh, makeup channels that I've been watching just in general have been Wild Young Thing Hey guys it's Jasmine here and this is my entry to Fanny Chanel's um, My Most Beautiful Me look Okay, first off, I'm just going to put it out there that I find uncomfortable talking about how this is my most beautiful look because, like most girls, I do not feel beautiful at all. So, please don't think this is me being like, look how beautiful I am, I'm amazing. I think that Wild well, Young Thing deserves a lot more subscribers and she's close to 100 now, so if you want to subscribe, you should do it. And Melissa loves makeup 82. But I don't know where makeup, I mean, I, probably, I still wouldn't know where to start really or anything like that. Never really worn makeup. Um, can't think of any time I've worn makeup. But you probably know that I'm not someone who's obsessed with looks or anything because, as I said in a video recently, I don't even buy my own jeans. I'm not sure how much jeans should cost anyway. I don't know. I wouldn't know where to start with buying jeans. I, I don't even know how much they're supposed to cost. Yesterday I watched a TV show on Channel 4, I think it was, called Beauty and the Beast or something like that. It's just an extreme title to get viewers, I suppose, where they um, put someone who had had loads of plastic surgery in a house with someone who had a facial deformity from an accident when they were young so they could try and learn from each other, I think. I'm not sure if they actually did learn it from each other in the end, I think that's fairly debatable. And there was a section in that TV show where they were talking about whether or not people with deformities would earn more money in a freak show than in sort of film industries. And I think going on that word, the thing that freaked me out most in that show was uh, the fact that the beauty was 
wanting to be awake during her facelift so that she could tell them how tight to hold her skin and things like that. The idea that you'd want to be awake through surgery just for vain reasons like that and while someone's cutting open your face, that's... That, that's uh, you know, I don't really like the idea of cutting entirely really, but the idea you'd want to be awake for it, that's... Oh, oh. That freaks me out more than a few scars on someone's face by accident. Wearing makeup occasionally is probably fine. I know I don't, but I think that if I think about it, it's probably the same as dressing in your best clothes occasionally if you want to feel special, things like that. So it's probably similar to that. But I'm not sure where the boundary is to stop or when not to. Like, some people say they don't wear makeup a lot, but they do. They say things like, oh, the everyday look, or, you know, the easy look, things like that with makeup. And I'm not sure where the boundaries are for wearing makeup exactly. I suppose that's a personal thing. The main thing, I guess, is to just feel happy of yourself as you are, and if you want to wear makeup, wear makeup, I guess.